Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Jay Coyne, Bay Area Realtor. And today I just want to make this quick video sharing with you how you can make up um, an appraisal shortfall. What to do when your appraisal comes in lower than your purchase price. Because um, that can really mess up a deal. Um, it can cause a little or a lot of distress. And we want to give you the solutions in order to... Um, Resolve that and move forward with the deal. What can you do to you know, not have that deal fall apart due to an appraisal shortfall? So there are a few items. Uh, first thing, we're going to talk about the preventative measures. Now, I talked about this in my previous video on how to actually write the offer non-contingent and actually prepare for that. But um, I want to revamp it a little bit and give you some better tips. So first thing first, um, you got to provide the comparables to the appraiser who's going out there and doing the appraisal, okay? You as an agent or your client, uh, you're gonna give them the data anyway. And you've already done that to explain to them what the market value of the home is and what they should offer for this property that's a reasonable, reasonable amount of money. So they have the data, they have all the past sales that they're already looking at, and uh, that's how you guys ideally had come up with your purchase price. So it's that data that's going to be used for the appraisal. Now the reason that you go and meet the appraiser and give them this data is because you know, sometimes appraisers may pull different comparables out of the blue or something um, and something that you didn't look at or something that uh, wasn't on your own list, your homework. So you want to make sure that your comparables matches up with them and you basically doing the homework for them and letting them copy off you. Okay. You know, that's, you know, the best surefire way in order to make sure that appraisal matches up with the purchase price value. All right. Tip number two is really hedging your bets against a failed appraisal. So if you do think there is a chance that the appraisal will fall short, well, what you can do is get two lenders, have your client get two lenders and be pre-approved with both and have both lenders send out an appraiser. Okay. Now it will cost you a little bit up front, um, depending on where you are. Appraisers are usually 500 to a thousand dollars or something, but if one appraisal falls short, then you already have a backup prepared and you're not going to need to ask for an extension of escrow or something. You're already pursuing both of these at the same time so that you can pick and choose when both appraisals come back. Okay. That's a great, great way um, to hedge against as a low appraisal or an appraisal shortfall. And um, I highly recommend that if you do you know, think there is some chance of of the appraisal coming in short. You're already prepared for that. Okay. Now let's say both of those options are exhausted. Uh, hopefully you did them both or maybe not, but it doesn't matter. You are where you are right now and you have a low appraisal in hand and it's sort of messing up your deal. Well, um, if the comparables actually didn't match up to the appraisal, then they probably shouldn't have gone in without an appraisal contingency or something, or you know maybe you were expecting that and your client's okay with the shortfall appraisal. However, you know, if it was very unaccepted, uh, unexpected, and if it was very unjustified, then there's maybe a few things that you can do. Number one is you can rebuttal an unreasonable appraisal. If you get the appraisal report back and you're looking through the comparables that the appraiser had used and you believe that either those appraisals, I mean, those comparables are incorrect or they're not the best comparables in the market at the time or that they're making adjustments incorrectly to not justify this uh, current purchase price or that you believe there are better comparables in the market that they should have used. Well, what you can do is rebuke this appraisal by writing that detailed email and giving 
your reasoning um, to all these different points and criteria of what should have been done better or you know providing other comparables that they should have used so you know you're probably gonna have to ask your lender about this and they have probably done this before um, if they're experienced in this business um, and it's it's definitely possible for that to have some success um, if you know you're giving solid rational reasoning to an unjustified appraisal okay so that's another way you could potentially uh, get a new appraiser out there and have them reappraise a home and then you can start from the beginning maybe getting to appraisers uh, or making sure that you provide the comparables that they should have used and meeting that appraiser up front okay so here's a hot tip for you if you are planning to rebuke the appraisal well as an agent you probably know the market very well uh, hopefully better than the appraiser and um, you know that there are some homes that are currently pending in the market and you probably made a higher purchase price because you your client had offered on many other homes and you know, they got outbid or something and you know you decided on this home that they really love that they're gonna bid a little bit higher than maybe some of the past sales and that's why you're in this appraisal issue however there are probably homes that are currently pending that will sell in the next few days or in the next week and you know what their purchase price is. So those will probably be better comparables for you um, in order to rebuke this appraisal. So what you can do is if you know that they're closing soon, you time up your appraisal rebuttal with the closings of these houses so you that you can use them as uh, your new comparables in order to better um, give reasoning on why this appraisal was unjustified or something like that okay uh, because appraisers can't use homes that are currently pending they have to be sold uh, in order for them to use them in their appraisal report so you timely match up your rebuttal with the closings of these sales and hopefully you know that'll give you more evidence and more power more reasoning in order to get a successful reappraisal okay so if you are going to go that rebuttal route you're probably going to need to uh, renegotiate an extension of escrow and Sometimes sellers are not going to want to do that. Okay, that's just more added time that they have to be in a contract and they want their money, right? So <clears throat> let's say you have an appraisal contingency in place. Well, then you know, the appraisal short form may not be the worst situation to be in. You have some leverage to negotiate these items and you, know, you can pursue that. However, in many cases, you may not have an appraisal contingency, and that's where the stress and the anxiety comes in, right? So, um, if they're not willing to negotiate an extension of ESCO to rebuke this appraisal, well, the only really other thing you can do is negotiate on the price. Now, this is something that had happened to me and one of my clients and where we believe we got a totally unjustified appraisal. However, it was my fault I didn't provide the comparables up front, but I thought because it was a townhouse, it would have been a very, very easy appraisal um, that I, I was just lazy, to be honest. But now I've learned. Another tip is that do not use out of state or out of uh, town appraisers. And it's very important that you have a local lender, et cetera, to, to give you a local appraiser. However, the sellers for the property we were in contract for, they did not want to extend escrow for us to get an appraisal rebuttal. They did not want to do that. Apparently, you know, closing faster was a lot more important to them. But I had a great relationship with this other agent. We work well together. We were in very good communications and good standing. And you know, we try to come up with a solution that would make it okay for both parties. And so what we did was negotiate the purchase price instead. And I think we had a ten to $15,000 appraisal shortfall, but we split the difference. 
okay? My client would make up in cash the maybe $6,000, and then they reduce the purchase price by $6,000 or so. And both parties were super happy. We were able to close on time, and the deal was an ultimate success. Um, however, you know, if they didn't had agreed to that, uh, my clients would probably have been mad at me, but it wouldn't have been the end of the world. But you know, this is something that you talk about before writing an offer, before removing those appraisal contingencies, some of the risks involved of you know, going in non-contingent and walking through, walking through every scenario with them so that it's at least a little bit expected once it comes about. Um, however, at the end of the day, we made it work for both parties. My clients were extremely happy. They got a great price on the home. And uh, obviously the seller's super happy that they closed on time and are also getting you know, a good price. So uh, that's how this business works. There are so many solutions to um, a lot of these scenarios, a lot of these issues that, you know, it's all about going through the motions process of elimination and having a good agent, ideally that you're working with, present to you all these different solutions that you can try um, in order to resolve any potential issue because that's one of the main reasons why sellers want are accepting offers with a lot of higher down payment nowadays is specifically for that appraisal reason um, if you know you have a higher down payment and appraisal comes in short what you can do is let's say you're 30 percent down you can take your down payment down to 25%, use that 5% in order to make up that shortfall appraisal, and now you're good to go just with a lower down payment overall. Now, that's why sellers are pursuing offers that have the higher down payment. All right, there you have it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have ever had an appraisal issue and maybe you overcame it, maybe you didn't. Please let me know your experience down below. If there's anything that I missed that had worked for you, and let, let us all know and educate us in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thanks for watching.